Wrestlers are artists. It's about choreography and timing and acting. It's all these art forms in one. And when I used to watch it, not only was I captivated by the wrestling, but I was captivated by the characters. There is so much crossover in the realm of queer performance and wrestling. That's why gay-themed characters have always thrived throughout the history of professional wrestling. A lot of queer people don't know their queer history, and the struggles that queer performers have faced in wrestling have never been discussed. Whenever I first got to Moodles, of course, I kept everything under lock and key because I didn't want her to know that I was gay. In the early days of Pat Patterson's career, being homosexual was illegal, and it was considered a mental illness. For them, it was always about being able to hide in plain sight. It sucks that it had to happen, but the people that kept fighting and fighting and fighting, like, they're the reasons why we're now what we are now. I don't want us to ever have to be somebody we're not again. Somebody has to start something, because if no one speaks up, nothing's ever going to change. You think I'm going to shy away on the fact that I'm gay? It's about time that you're not afraid to come out and be afraid that the promoter's going to squash you down because of who you are and what you are. The ring is the only place I actually get to be who I am. They stereotype me how I look, and then as soon as I start wrestling, it's like, holy crap, this guy is awesome. White man wrestling has had a great 2,000 years, but there's other kinds of men. It is possible an out from the jump gay person can get over, can sell you merchandise, can bring in a house. She's just Your talent should be the only thing that determines how far you get. But in order for us to get to this utopian idea, at some point it needed to be on record what actually fucking happened. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are so happy to have with us here Rye Levy, the director of Out in the Ring, and he so graciously has allowed us to speak with two of the subjects of this film, professional wrestlers, Oya El Mar and Danny Jordan. Everybody say hi. Hello. 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 Now, this film talks about LGBTQ professional wrestlers, both past and present, the historical representation of professional wrestling uh, through, throughout the almost 150 years of this tradition that is professional wrestling. So, Ryan, I'm going to start with you and ask you this question. Why? Why did you want to do this? Um, always wanted to tell stories that represented the voices of my community, but through a lens of places where we've been told we're not welcome or we haven't had necessarily a lot of representation. I grew up in Alberta on a steady diet of 1980s Calgary Stampede Wrestling and uh, always had an affection for it. And the time to uh, make a feature film finally came. And I decided to take something that one, I had a childhood passion for and love and affection for still. And somewhere where I had not seen as much representation, uh, whether uh, historically in the past or at the time uh, that we started, uh, there was not a whole lot. There was just, it was just starting to see people stepping forward to take their place in professional wrestling. So it made sense to uh, uncover what uh, one could often refer to as a hidden history. I love that. And the history of this sort of representation does go all the way back to the beginnings of, of professional wrestling as a carnival sideshow, as far as you know, I know. Uh, for me, though, the first time I ever saw an LGBTQ professional wrestler was obviously growing up in a Latin household, Cassandro. Yes. Which is a big thing for me. Yeah, and Cassandro's place in pro wrestling uh, can't, um, is obviously a very important. Um, it's an important touchstone in terms of uh, representation, visibility. Um, Cassandro has benefited from uh, both a documentary feature on their life and but also um, a beautiful biopic uh, from my dear friend Roger Ross Williams, uh, who had you know was one of the first people to kind of um, step into the world of the exoticos in terms of exploring Cassandra's story. Um, but there's so much deeper, richer history, and this is you know as we discover in the film, 
there's a lot more to these stories and these character representations than uh, many people will have the opportunity to see. And hopefully this film will open their eyes a little bit to uh, meeting some amazing people like the wrestlers that are joining us today. And speaking of that, that's called a segue, ladies and gentlemen. Hoyo, Danny, why did you want to take a, a part in this documentary? What, 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 was it, what was it for you that really said, I want to be a part of this? It's it, mostly just because R- Rye asked me. No, just kidding. Um, I wanted to like share my coming out story too. So I figured it would be a cool way to kind of just put myself out there a little bit more for the public because I wasn't really out yet. So it kind of it really helped me see all the other people that are so okay with it and and welcoming with open arms. And all right, I see. I like that because I had seen you before on. Uh you know, I'm prof- as a professional wrestler, but I didn't know that that was your story until I watched this movie. And it was really nice to see. I, I-, I didn't get all of it, obviously, because it broke down in the middle of you speaking, but I did get the gist of what you said. I, um, now I decided to do this because at the time that Rye was beginning to do this, I was also simultaneously beginning my my journey in professional wrestling. For the second time, I, I had, you know, we don't even talk about this in the film, but I had started in professional wrestling when I was a, a freshman in college, but I was so uncomfortable with myself in terms of my own sexuality and my own identity that it was a very uncomfortable fit for me because pro wrestling was, in fact, a place where I had been given a message that I was, people like me was, you know, were not welcome. So I put that dream aside for many years and then I circled back to it shortly before the time that Rye decided to go into production for Out in the Ring. So it it was a really nice opportunity for me to um, kind of celebrate what I was doing and where how far the industry had come. But initially it was something that um, I didn't know a lot about what this project and project would become right i was one of the very first people i think to sort of join in as an interview subject and it was there we've often joked that there needs to be a documentary about the making of the documentary because there were so many developments and continually adding new people and adding new layers or having to rewrite things because history was changing legitimately around us as the course of the film was being made so it was a very interesting extremely interesting project to be part of i love that and it seemed like everybody that was taking part in it really just loved being there and talking with rye right you seem to have a very keen eye and a, and a great personality to be a documentarian because your subjects from what i can see you could have just edited it well who knows they seem to like you very much and I, and I had to commend you for that this this thing came off so well uh, let me ask you guys a question because I'm a huge pro wrestling guy. Who are your favorite all time professional wrestlers? Go to my wrestlers. Danny. Do you need to think about it? My all time favorite. Sorry, wrestlers. you're cutting out very badly. And... Oh my gosh. Um, so, my favorite all time wrestler, all time favorite wrestler is beautiful Bobby Eaton, one half of the Midnight Express. And so that. That is not to say that he's my favorite wrestling personality because my favorite wrestling personalities would be Ravishing Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig. But I I have such a strong affection for beautiful Bobby Eaton and the Midnight Express, Jim Cornette, that collective, because those are the people that I grew up watching and they truly made me want to be part of the world of professional wrestling. Jim Cornette made me want to be a manager. And then, of course, you know, there was simultaneous to that people like um, sensational Sherry Martell, who I loved all her variations of her character. Um, Gold Dust, who we cover in the film, was always a standout for me and somebody that I really loved and appreciated because at the time that he was so prominent, that was the only thing on American television that that was like that, that, that level of flamboyance that would allow me to connect with it um, as a potential representative of the LGBTQ community. I love that. And those are all, what I noticed is there's a common thread. You like those guys who are 
prolific in the ring. All of these guys, exceptional technical wrestlers. So I love that answer. I love Bobby Eaton. Great answer. Danny, who are some people for you? Um, so my favorite wrestlers growing up is obviously like John Cena and The Rock. So they were such big inspirations for me. Um, so typical answer. But then as far as the women go, definitely Lita and Trish because they you know, paved the way for everybody else behind them. But what made me get into wrestling myself personally was seeing uh, the four horsewomen of NXT come up. So Bailey, Sasha, Becky, Charlotte, all of them made it more realistic for me to go achieve my dream. So I felt like I was able to go follow in their footsteps and seeing the way that they've worked so hard before they got signed to a television company and the training that they went through and the independent wrestling that they did, all of that, like, was just, it was very inspiring for me. And like I said, it just made it more realistic to see how uh, worshipped their talents were, just talent alone. Um, of course, they're all beautiful in their own way. And so is everybody else that's gotten picked up. But I felt like the stigma was more of the model type. So it just made me just some average girl think that I could definitely do this now it's a dream that's achievable like I can reach out and touch it instead of reach out and just miss it because it's just a glass dream you know so it was very inspiring for me to see them work so hard and make me love it so much I fell in love with it I love that. And to see someone like yourself, Danny, who's been on TV and has wrestled some really big names in women's wrestling, like Chris Statlander, Abaddon. I love Abaddon. Uh, you <laughs> really, you, she's hilarious. Uh, love her. Uh, and to see you say that really tells us how transcendent the modern era, especially for women's wrestling, has been. Uh, it's incredible to watch those ladies, all four of them in their various projects week after week. I love that. Great Absolutely. answer. Thank you. Right. Obviously, you grew up in Calgary. You have some pre favorite pro wrestlers. Who are they? Well, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you, you're kind of told as a kid, you kind of like, uh, you know, you should like the good guys and stuff. But, you know, secretly, I was, you know, I loved listening to Bad News Brown call people, uh, call people uh, beer bellied sharecroppers and yell at, yell at people and uh these in in this in this northlands agricom uh i loved rip rogers and goldie rogers they were just so flamboyant and extreme and just you know really was drawn to kind of you know this you know this kind of combination of villainy and comedy that was just so engaging and entertaining uh and 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 and, and, it, and again you know i was i was at the beginning of those careers of watching guys like owen hart and brett brian pillman who were all just starting their careers or so i was privy to a lot of really special uh wrestling um performers who would be go on to become essentially the performers of the 90s uh that really drove professional wrestling forward um but uh you know for me i mean i just i have i have such a fondness for you know, I I think Poyo and I have talked about this too. You know, fondness for the heels in a way, um, in those performances, uh, and and just you know they just you know they drive storytelling in so many great ways. And Danny Danny herself, a heel in many ways in 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 wrestling, and uh, and you know it's uh, you know I, mean, I think I think you can't help but you know you you say oh I like this one, but you know secretly deep down you really do like. It's them. so much more fun to be the heel, right, Danny? Oh. So, so much well, more. So I mean, like, I I think of like, you know, we we both like get inspiration from like the, those pop culture things. Like, hello, if if you're not Regina George, who are you really? Like, if you're not Regina George, who are you? Exactly. You have to love that. Mean girl, in order to succeed. And if you guys want to see a great example of being able to tell a story as a heel, there's a match between Danny and Hikaru Shida in 2020. There's nobody in the crowd. And they're still able to tell a hell of a story in that match. Uh, and that, to me, is that's 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 pro wrestling, being able to tell those stories in the ring. Thank so, you so much. Oh, yeah. That came there. <laughs> no, it was good. I mean, Shida's also ridiculously talented. So. Oh, so good. Yeah. 
See, I, and I'll tell you guys, my favorite perf, uh, performers, obviously, I'm a Bret the Hitman Hart guy. I grew up in the mid, uh, early 90s. And so Bret Hart was always my guy, especially when he went uh, anti-America. I was like, pro-Canada, sweet. I'm not even Canadian. So it made me well, laugh. And I think that you picked somebody who has a standout long-term feud as well. And I, and that's one of the wonderful things. It's like, you can always look back and judge people's where they stood. You can say like, were you Brett or were you Sean? Are you, are you rock and roll or are you midnight? Are you, you know, like, are you Sasha or are you Bailey? Are you Bailey? Are you, <laughs> so it's like, who are you? Like, where do you fall? I'm always Lita. Also always Lita over Trish. <laughs> Always, because I'm a rocker guy, so it has to be. Uh, I love that. And thank you guys for talking wrestling with me. I nerd out on wrestling just as much as I do on film. And speaking of film, oh my God, can't wait to get to this. This is my favorite question I ask every guest. Love this question. It's really hard though. So I'm going to give you guys a second to think about it. If you had two movies you had to watch on a desert island, and those are the only two for the rest of your life, what two are you going to watch and why? And I definitely am going to be judging you on these answers. Clueless and Auntie Maine with Rosalind Russell. Um, they're my two all-time favorite movies. I could literally pretty much recite them. So I apparently have put myself on a desert island and watched them repeatedly as it is. So the Rosalind Russell version of Auntie Mame, packed with beautiful cinematography. All of the set design is stunning. Her costuming is impeccable. It's packed with laughs. It's heart-wrenching and touching and beautiful. I could watch it all the time. And Clueless is uh you know for me that and mean girls like are, are kind of hand in hand sometimes i'm like am i a Cher horowitz or am i um regina george and they're the same character archetype just with different motivations one doesn't know that she comes across as mean or disinterested flippant all of these things just because that's who she is the other one is motivated by um sheer desire to maintain her social status and I, I fluctuate like Monday, I might be Cher, but Tuesday, I might be Regina, but definitely clueless in terms of the, the overall laughs for me. I love that. Any movie with Rosalind Russell in it is a great choice. So fantastic. Choice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And clueless is one of the best comedies in 1990. So great choices there. What about y'all, Danny? Right. Uh, well, obviously Mean Girls, number one all time i can put that from start to finish um and then i think the second one i was bouncing back and forth while you were answering your question there um between the barbie movie which you know fairly it's new great. but it's creeping up there for me now like all it's it's all that goes into it too i heard about all the work that they put into it and like the set was completely real. Apparently nothing was CGI. Everything was built from scratch to look like real but fake. And uh, I think the silliness in it is just top notch. I think the story, the message behind it was top notch. It made me cry at the end. Like so much went into that movie that I really, really respect. So I think that's creeping up there for me. Otherwise, I was going to say like, uh, uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame. That would probably be my other one. But if I, I had like to pick two, is. man, that's tough. I like those answers. I'm, it's funny, each of you has picked a movie directed by a woman. Obviously, Clueless is directed by a woman. Uh, and Barbie is directed by the lovely and very talented Greta Gerwig. Uh, she's ridiculously talented. Rye, what you got? Ooh, well, I mean, uh, the trifecta. Well, I mean, it. I would probably end up. It would. I'm gonna probably have to sneak it in with my two because I'm not going to listen to anybody on that. Um, I have to have my Heather's there because that was my movie. Um, going every Friday because it was playing in Edmonton. I just went downtown. There's one movie theater showing it. It played there for 16 weeks. I went every week to see it um just you know nothing else kind of existed in that world uh, but i mean my two favorite films i mean you know uh Hill lloyd's safety last uh which you know uh is you know just the epitome of the perfect silent comp 
comedy, you know, physical stunt work, you know, hanging off the face of that clock, climbing that building, and knowing that Lloyd did all his own stunts without the assistance. It's just, it's a marvel. It's, it's, it, it holds up, you know, almost a hundred, more than a hundred years after its creation. It's funny. It's, 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 it's dramatic. It's, it's thrilling. It's, it's, you know, it's like ostensibly an action comedy. And then the other film that, you know, I mean, I think, you know, I talked to RJ City about it, and we both agree it is a wrestling film, is uh, Paris is Burning. Because it yeah. might as well, because in a lot of ways it functions in that way, um, in terms of a, a unique microcosm and a culture. And, you know, for me, that that documentary is one that, you know, inspires me in so many ways. Uh, the work that Jenny Livingston did, and you know, I, I I've gotten to know Jenny over the years, and and uh, meet you know members you know uh, of the Pendarvis family and such, and you know from those from those people over the years, and that's just such an important film in terms of an insight into a culture, a community, a world, and uh, you know, and there there's you know as as Razor Clark eloquently says in the film the parallels between ball culture and wrestling and presentation and drag is so is so they're so rooted and interconnected you know they do uh they do definitely um intersect i love that for for a lot of people that 78 minutes was their introduction to the drag scene drag is an art drag is a thing that people do so I love that answer. And obviously, <clears throat> me, you know, I, I love all your guys' answers. Safety last, though, that took me by surprise. I love safety last. Harold Lloyd doesn't get talked about enough. He's very much under the radar because usually when you think of physical silent actors, you think of Chaplin, you think of Buster Keaton. But Harold Lloyd's out there doing things. So I love those answers. Great stuff. Now, I wanted to go back to this movie. And there are a lot of ridiculously talented uh, wrestlers who couldn't be here with me today. Uh, personal favorite of mine, Sunny Kiss. Love them. They're incredibly good in the ring. Promos are always off the chain, and I never know what's about to come out of their mouth. <laughs> and so I love this. I loved this movie in general as a film, uh, and I loved it as a wrestling fan. So I wanted to say, great work, right? Great work, everybody on this film because I, it's something that you can enjoy whether you're a wrestling fan whether you're a documentarian fan whether you just like want to watch a good movie so great job right i just wanted to give you your well, flowers you know, i want to kind of i appreciate that but i do really have to say you know it's, if it wasn't for amazing people um like poyo like danny like sunny like dark chic like mike Perro, so many in tex green um that we wouldn't you know I wouldn't have a film. I mean, they have to share and be willing to share. And they also have to be articulate and eloquent and, and engaging and warm. And in every, in every case, all of these people are all of those things plus more and just so charming and wonderful. And you want, you want to get to know them. You want to hear their story. I love that. I, I've worked with some of these people, by the way, in this film, in fact, I've, let me rephrase that. I've, at this point, I've worked with all of these people for the most part, unless they are like a legend who maybe not be with us anymore. But all of the current wrestlers I have, and this film made me fall in love with them more as a friend, a colleague, a coworker, and as a fan. So I hope that that translates, you know, that somebody who knows these people firsthand falls more in love with them. I hope the person who doesn't know us at all falls in love with us each because... It, it was a really emotional time for each of us, I think, to to talk about this. Absolutely. And if I could add one more thing, too, same thing. Um, I got to meet all of these people if I haven't met them already or if they haven't already been my close friend. And I hear their stories like it's the first time that I've ever met you. And we met where where do we meet uh, in where was that uh, convention in California? Right? Yeah, we yeah. went to Rathacon. Right. It was great. I know time flies. <laughs> it felt like so long ago. Um but meeting you was so amazing. And I was just like, I got to, I got to see the people that were involved and hear more of their stories. And like you said, it made me want to hear and see more about them. And it just like, it just touched me. I didn't know what to expect with this documentary, but when we sat down and we watched the whole thing start to finish, it made me cry. It made me laugh. It educated me on a lot of stuff that I had no idea about history of LGBT wrestling. Like 
and just in world in general. So it was so educational and I just wanted to like have everyone see it, everyone. Like I, I need this to be out for the public already. <laughs> that brings me to my next question. When is it gonna be out, right? Well, the worldwide broadcast premiere across the United States is set for November 15th on Fuse TV and Fuse Plus. So uh, you can order it on Fuse Plus, and if you have Fuse TV, you can watch it on the uh, standard broadcast. Uh, and uh, you know, we're really excited to uh, to um, to take this next journey. Um, excited that you know we have a national TV broadcast for this story, and uh, that we have a broadcaster like Fuse TV that has a mission to support diversity and inclusion as part of their mandate. Uh, in terms of their documentaries, they've been able to highlight some amazing docs, including a uh, uh, doc that was a uh, hit out of Tribeca being BB, but BB Zahara Bene, and they elevated that story and were able to provide that. And they've been wonderfully supportive in terms of submitting the film for awards consideration, hopefully. We'll see where that goes. But I mean, it's so nice to have, you know, a, 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 you know, many times, you know, I mean, when I've worked in distribution for years, broadcasters and distributors take your film and, and that's it. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it sits on a shelf. It, it gets put out. There's very little impact. We've been so happy. I think everybody can agree now that at this point, the amount of press and coverage we've been doing, everybody interviews from Pero to Sonny, to Danny, to Poyo, to myself. Um, and there's still more to come because we're, you know, we're three and a half weeks away. So, um, you know, the opportunity right now to elevate their stories and the, the, and the stories of so many others is, is there. And, uh, and that's, it's wonderful that Fuse has uh, taken, uh, taken this journey with us. I love that. Guys, I just wanted to say, do you have one more, th anything else you want to say to the people out there or, and, or do you want to give them a pitch as to why they should check out your movie out in the ring? Um, well, like I said, it was so educational for me. Um, it opened up a lot of doors, like, uh, and a lot of perspectives for me to see how far everybody's come or what their journey was and who's paved the way for us to be comfortable coming out in the ring. Um, so, um, like I said, yeah, just so educational. Please watch it. <laughs> um, for me, I think that the reason that I would love for people to watch this, um, or what I hope people take away from it, you know, I, I've often said that when I started following my own pro wrestling dreams, it was for purely selfish reasons. Like, I'm in love with wrestling. I want to do wrestling. This is my passion, my dream. But the unexpected... Uh, occurrence that came from that is that people who were like me at a time when there was nothing available where I saw myself represented are seeing people like myself and Danny and the stars of this film and they are recognizing that you can indeed be authentically yourself and still pursue a dream in the world of professional wrestling and not only that but you can be successful at it and that is what I hope is one of the side effects of people seeing this, that, that we will inspire people who have come behind us and by offering something that simply wasn't available to them, that it did not exist to people like me. So I hope we can be that for them. And last, but certainly not least. Well, I want everybody as i said to uh hear these stories uh from these amazing performers um i'm using wrestling as a microcosm for a community and for people to find their place uh that they feel welcome they feel safe they feel they can represent themselves and and create and uh what i most love about everybody is, is their stories are universal in many ways they're all very different but they are universal stories of struggle and perseverance and making and 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 uh, demanding and staking their claim in a place that they should have every ability and uh right to uh be welcome in and uh, make a living 
And that's ultimately, you know, what I kind of hope uh, for every film that I make and every story we tell is that, you know, in telling, you know, equity and inclusion, love and uh, love and uh, truth are the driving forces of what all of us should hope for and want for. And we're just doing it through this kind of unique, um, absolutely singular art form and uh, presentation. I love that answer. That's that that really does tell the tale. So, because there's a, there's a lot of love put into this film, and I really do hope that audiences out there do check this movie out when it does hit. You said November fifteenth. Is that correct? November fifteenth on Fuse TV and Fuse on Plus. Fuse Perfect. And awesome. watch because I want to be gay famous. Hello, make me famous. Watch <laughs> us. Boyo wants to be gay famous. So go ahead and do it because he's told you to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, Poyo Del Mar, Danny Jordan, and Rye Levy. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, y'all.